Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Ambassador Bhadra Kumar and we are going to discuss Pompeo's visit, the US Secretary of State. Ambassador Bhadra Kumar, you have been with us earlier as well. How do you see Pompeo's visit? Do you see as an attempt to bring back United uh, uh, India to the United States fold, so to say, which they think now they're going out of? Because earlier United States had managed to get Indian government more closely aligned to it. We had the Malabar exercises. It appeared that on Southeast Asia, as well as East Asia, on the question of the islands and the disputes about the islands, India was siding more with the Americans than with the, you know, keeping a neutral profile on that. Do you think some of that has changed and that is why Pompeo's visit? Well, you know, the uh, visit is uh, overdue in the sense that uh, towards, the, uh, towards the final lap of the first term of the government, the BJP government, uh, the relationship was in a kind of a state of drift. And uh, uh, that is because uh, primarily due to uh, the Trump factor the you know the uh, aberrations that have come into uh, the incoherence that have come into the u.s policies uh, created uncertainties and you talk uh, of the trade issues as well as overall s400 overall, kind of issues overall. where you they know have he said has uh, swung from one extreme to the other say for instance with regard to china so when he speaks about indo-pacific uh, strategy um, we are not very sure about uh, its uh, uh, consistency, you know, this kind of thing. Then uh, making very disparaging remarks about uh, Prime Minister Modi more than once, you know. Uh, then uh, talking in a very blunt, undiplomatic way about the trade balance for an economy of America's size, you know, uh, even if uh, he uh, means what he says in terms of uh, America first, the amount in question, you know, some 25 billion, 30 billion dollars is nothing. But, you know, to uh, mock at the prime minister like this, you know, uh, on Harley Davidson motorbike and things like that. You know, Reducing the trade issue to a motorcycle yeah, issue. Yeah, motorcycle things and, and all that. So as we a, have also it's said, a, it's a yes. very small element. Yes. Plus, here Harley Davidsons are actually assembled here. Yes. And it is not that the Harley Davidson import is the basic yes. issue. And I think also, the despite whatever the Americans may claim now that uh, they were sympathetic towards India on the Doklam standoff and so on, the Doklam standoff, I think, was a watershed moment uh, with regard to the India-US relationship also, because uh, that was a rude awakening, you know, that uh, we are on our own. And an independent line to China uh, must be there and there is no alternative to it. And uh, you can't bandwagon because we have specific interests with regard to the relationship with China. And it's a very hugely consequential relationship. And that prompted certainly the Prime Minister and one can say with uh, almost 100% certainty that there was no American input in it at all. The initiative that he took toward China for the informal summit in Wuhan. You know, without any agenda, structured agenda, a freewheeling conversation where things which cannot be uh, openly talked about can be talked about and uh, each other's intentions could be fathomed. And on the basis of that, you know, a kind of uh, understanding could be formed over time. Ambassador Bhattakubar, I would like to go back a little yeah, on this. Yeah. This is what would have been the Indian Foreign Office's position for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Indian Foreign Office would have taken always a position that India has to maintain a strategic autonomy because it's mm -hmm. too big a country mm -hmm. to be on one or the other bandwagon. Mm -hmm. So do you think in that sense we see coming back of this understanding in Indian foreign policy now and this government also accepting that? You know, uh, a lot of aberrations were there in the Indian behavior with regard to China in the first three years. Uh, things, you know, which really made no sense in terms of ground realities, in terms of India's uh, comprehensive national power vis-a-vis -vis China. 
the kind of things he did, you know, to build a Dalai Lama, you know, many, many things we did, this you know. Unnecessarily uh, pinpricks? Unnecessarily, like, you know, getting into this joint vision statement with uh, Barack Obama uh, on uh, the South China Sea. South China Sea. Uh, it's none of our concern, basically. You see, the all this kind of things, and uh, finally it came to that uh, flashpoint in Doklam. Doklam. And uh, till today, I really don't understand, you know, why such an irrational behavior to have gone for a showdown like that, you know, instead of talking things over privately behind the scenes. So there was a certain uh, muscular diplomacy which was very much in evidence, you know, at the, till that time. That is why I said that it was a rude, I, I said it deliberately that it was a rude awakening, you know, the, that one. And uh, till that point you find, you know, that things were going exceedingly well with the Americans. You know, you, there is no doubt about it that uh, this uh, government in the first term pursued and an ambitiously pro-American foreign policy. There's no doubt about it. And there is also you know. those, shall we say, the defense agreements. Yes. Which particularly... Logistics agreement and yeah. other things followed. Which actually tie <coughs> the two sides together in a yeah. way which would yeah. be, could be dangerous in yeah. the future. Yeah. Because some of them, which yeah. appear very long-winded names, yeah. essentially call for an integration of the communication network. Yes. And that essentially yes. means that you will say, S-400 now cannot be integrated. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, our air defense which you want to buy from Russia yes. cannot be integrated. Therefore, you should not buy it. Yes. You see, the, uh, the Americans are uh, clearly rattled by two things that Modi did. One was, uh, two, three things that Modi did. One was this uh, summit with uh, Xi Jinping in Wuhan, end of April. Then followed by the next month, a meeting with President Putin. Now, President Putin is poison, as far as the Americans are concerned. I mean, uh, for whatever reasons of their own, Russia doesn't pose that kind of a challenge to them for their supremacy in a medium long term like China does. But on their radar somehow, you know, I mean, Putin is, they're very allergic to it. I and then that uh, Sochi meeting. So eh? that I think is also part of the, shall we say, the older anti-Soviet, uh, shall we yes, say, yes, hatred yes, yes, that yes. they have, which is you morphed see, into anti-Russian now. This is now. Uh, a toxic relationship. And you know, now it has gone beyond uh, all this Russia collusion and Trump and everything. Uh, they just don't want this relationship, you know. So you see, and uh, so Prime Minister Modi uh, has, uh, it has come to their notice as a uh, wonderful personal equation, first of all, with President P uh, Putin. Uh, they're very warm towards each other. And then the Sochi meeting, and then in uh, Shangri-La uh, dialogue in Singapore on the 1st of June, he made his keynote speech, which was a stunning speech in the presence of the Mattis, the, at that time the then Secretary of Defense, Defense. saying that Indo-Pacific is not a strategy, it is a geographical description. Which is very different from very what different from he had signed yes. on earlier yes, yes. on now the This is a issue. complete reversal of the joint vision statement with Barack, Obama. with Barack Obama. He has said that the strategy in that region as far as India is concerned should be inclusive, which means that anything that doesn't include China you know, count us out of it. We are not ganging up. And that we give a centrality to the ASEAN, which is very fast mm -hmm. and which has almost normalized its relations with China, is even holding joint military exercises, is discussing a code of conduct and so on, you know. So you see the, uh, that uh, reversal, uh, uh, or, that, or rather a, what began as a course correction, is actually taking very interesting forms today. So as, we saw, as we saw in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Bishkek. Now, it's not a small matter that between this time of the year in June, in the next six months, he's meeting Xi Jinping four times. They've uh, slaughtered it, you know, like that. And then uh, he has invited President Xi Jinping uh, for Wuhan too. Wuhan too, in the sense, a similar informal meeting in India. And you know, uh, diplomatic courtesy means he could, you know, give a response and it will be discussed through the uh, diplomatic channels in due course and all that. But President Xi Jinping's 
spontaneously accepted. He warmed up to the idea and he said he would like to come. So you see, now that is taking place. Uh, so Last time it got sabotaged because of the military standoff on the border. No, Wuhan. Not Wuhan, I said when he had come to India ah, at yeah, that yeah, point yeah. of time. So th what I'm saying is, uh, then that, and then in Bishkek, they have also said, uh, and you know, it should not have been released to the public, uh, if there wasn't at least, you know, some degree of confidence about what they have said, which is instructing the two special representatives, both the leaderships, to expedite a border settlement. Now, I'm coming to this, that uh, I get a sense that uh, in this second coming to power, after the election, recent election, uh, Mr. Modi has uh, no more heights to capture. He is at the pinnacle. And I think he's looking in certain ways at his legacy. And I, I will not put it beyond, this has not been written about, but I get a sense that he's looking at a border settlement with China as an enduring historic legacy for his, his leadership. It will go down in the history books. If that happens. If that happens. Now, as far as the Chinese are concerned, you have to see that uh, because the Americans take notice of all this, which is why I brought in the China factor into this. And this is what is upsetting the Americans also. Uh, in the run-up to the election also, the Chinese commentators were uniformly uh, supportive of Prime Minister Modi calling him a reformer and all that. And they've been, their experience with him as chief minister of Gujarat was also very happy. Chinese companies did rather well there in Gujarat. So they have a f confidence that uh, he will, Prime Minister Modi will now give with the kind of political consolidation through the last five year period that he has managed. Very turbulent, very controversial path he took, but it was essentially a matter of political consolidation. And uh, the result of uh, 2014 has vindicated the trajectory he did. You may disagree or not, that's a different matter. But from the Chinese point of view, they feel that the kind of legacy that he is building up, China will have a role to play, and he recognizes that. You Leaving know? The, the, shall we say, those parts out, mm -hmm. he can deliver. According to China, he can deliver, he can deliver he can at deliver the moment. Not only that, if uh, you know, uh, Prabir, you look at it today in terms of the world uh, scenario, the <coughs> job creation is number one concern, definitely. Even though there's a big mandate, it can change in a matter of one year to two years if dissolution sets in. Absolutely. You know. So it's a, there is, it is still that it's a flashpoint is remaining there, but despite the mandate, you know, we know that. So know. there is a short window in which short, he can yeah. actually yes. do certain things. And uh, you know, the kind of uh, investment and the kind of relevant technology for India's stage of growth, you know, and uh, uh, investable surpluses in large quantities, you know, infrastructure alone needs more than a trillion dollars according to the Indian estimations. If that is the case, and if, as he said in the first meeting here on the 16th of uh, the month, after uh, taking over, after being sown in, uh, that you know this five five trillion dollar, uh, even if it is not five trillion dollar, if such an ambitious goal is there, the Chinese see that they have That's a an opportunity. Rate. But specific to this now, mm -hmm. we have the Pompeo visit. Mm -hmm. So what is the American perspective? Mm -hmm. Why they're going to be here? What would they like to press India? And what could be India's interest? You see, the in a, in a nutshell, uh, they, this is a disconcerting trajectory from the American point of view, because this is uh, completely um, exposing the assumptions that they had made about India, that they got India in their pocket. You know, now you see, if you look at the military uh, part, uh, there has been magnificent progress on the military uh, cooperation between uh, not only the military exercises in terms of the exports, hardware, hardware and uh, these agreements which you mentioned, which are, you know, like umbilical courts, you know, and uh, r under the rubric of interoperability. They are uh, striving to get India into the American orbit. Completely. Things are going exceedingly well, you know, for them. And from this point of view, uh, from this point now, they have g 
they had gained such a confidence that uh, earlier time they used to look at it only in terms of uh, having a much bigger presence in the Indian defense sector and so on. But now, uh, the next stage, they need to evict the Russians. Yes. You know, it's a qualitative difference. So they have started leveraging uh, uh, the influence they have to that end. S-400, for example, you know, is, is one example. And they have now, Alice uh, Wells said a uh, testimony in the U.S. Congress on the 12th of June, where she has openly said that a certain moments arise when a country has to take a strategic stance. And uh, getting weapons is a statement about your position. And India must take that position. There's no alternative. So you see, it's not just a matter of interoperability or anything like that. They just want India to roll back the relationship. And integrate and now, militarily. Yeah, I mentioned States. that earlier part only because of this, that put in this analogy and so on. They see that there is a, you see this, we must connect the dots, then only we'll get the picture. There is also a, an, a, a Russian, a Sino-Russian Anton, Clearly. which is assumed the nature of a quasi-alliance today. I'm not, they will never probably have a military alliance like NATO. They will not, and it doesn't suit them, and they don't need it. But today, they have created so much space for each other by just this, you know. And the Americans are being checkmated everywhere. You know, yesterday Putin said that under no circumstance, oh my dead body, you know, that you, know, you can have an agenda towards Venezuela like this. Now, when Putin could say things so very bluntly, which he did yesterday, you can imagine, you know, the kind of space that, you know, the Russians have created for themselves. They are all over the place now on the world stage. And they've also said similarly, similar things about Iran, for instance, mm -hmm. the other issue. Other issue. That issues. we will not Iraq yeah. let Iran sink. Now, what I'm trying to say is this, that, you know, that they are coordinating their foreign policies, these two great powers, so comprehensively today that uh, I suspect again, this is again, you know, from my professional background and having lived and worked in Russia and so on, they must be talking the India part with the Chinese quite a bit. And they, they are in a position to influence the Chinese also. Now, mediation and all that is a very loaded expression. But part of the alchemy that is developing in India-China relationship the Russians are probably playing, high probability is that they are playing a very helpful role. But that is why, that I is why there is an RIC summit which they have slated in the sidelines of the G20 yes. in Osaka. Now, Russia, you know, India, China. When they probably have this summit, a couple of rooms away, Trump would be sitting because Trump is also taking part in it. Well, look at the symbolism. So you see, Americans have cause to worry that this is not a disjointed thing, but uh, there is a picture emerging of India basically exercising its strategic autonomy. So the assumptions that they made, that is why I said, and that is why you find that, you know, that they feel rattled. They feel rattled and they think, therefore, that they must really give a push and make the Indians take a stance not allow the Indians to remain ambivalent like this. So is your understanding that he has come to arm twist or he's come to woo? There are two ways of doing this. One is to say, well, you know, we are great friends and why are you doing this? We should get back together. And you, why do you need S-400? We'll give you something else, which what they have been saying. But you know, the way Trump has dealt with the trade issue, for instance, where he has been Disparaging remark is only one part of it, but he has also imposed unilateral sanctions now which to which India has responded. Now given the very much larger picture of which you have been talking, these appear like peanuts. And this appears to be also, shall we say, very thuggish international behavior that you're not discussing. You are not even trying to sort out the issues bilaterally. There are multilateral bodies. You are not doing anything on that. Plus, Vis-a-vis -vis Iran, you have violated the treaty that you had signed, which you have withdrawn from it, and the arm-twisting countries like India not to buy Iran oil be a part of, shall we say, private sanctions of the United States, not an international sanctions, not a sanction sanctioned by the United Nations. All of this is also something which is deeply concerning for countries like India, and therefore the need to 
either arm twist India or then try to soften them, soften them up in some other sense. We'll have to see this to what extent because this would be uh, this will not be all decided during this couple of days Tuesday and Wednesday alone. He's landing tonight, I think. Uh, it'll be an incremental process. But my hunch is that uh, we are resetting the compass for a new journey. And uh, the Americans have got wind of it. They don't like it. And they are trying to uh, stop it, arrest it, and get it back into the earlier mode. Uh, I don't think we will give in. This is my hunch. Thank you very much, Ambassador Bhadra Kumar, for being with us, talking about a new cusp point, shall we say, mm -hmm. of our foreign policy, mm -hmm. and hope that we can continue these discussions post Pompeo visit as well as other types. Thank you. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click.